wanted to make a real quick video trying to recap all of the uh, observations, the luminary observations everyone has been making lately. I know a lot of people, I think, are kind of looking for some some clarity or analysis or explanation or certainly consensus. And so I'm going to take a preliminary stab at talking about what I got out of all of this and I'm going to follow this up with a longer video where I kind of go into more detail and try to show everyone's data. And uh, But if you want to see more data um, in the meantime, I'm going to try and have all the links for everybody who is doing stuff, their YouTube channels, in the description below this video. And I've created a Facebook group uh, in, that I uh, will include the name of in the description below this video where I have been trying to collect everyone's data as well. So, in a nutshell, um, I guess things started off people had a ballpark idea of when they thought the uh, spring equinox would be and uh, some people started collecting ahead of that date and uh, there were different methods being used. There was, uh, I, I don't, uh, if you're familiar with the, uh, the four-pronged semi-sphere looking sundial that Jerry Morris used, that was one type of sundial. There was the straight line method. There was equatorial sundials. There were, uh, there were people uh, doing, looking at the angle of the sun similar to the, um, the uh, Jerry Morris's sundial. It, it kind of has a lot to do with the angle of the sun, uh, just laying down blocks on the ground and stuff. Uh, so different methods, uh, and uh, I think I think there was consensus in a nutshell. I think the majority of observations were pointing to uh, uh, March twentieth to be the equinox, and this was confirmed, like I said, I think with the majority of sundial witnesses, but then also by the sign of the moon setting with the sun uh, in the same portal that the sun set in, and Enoch describes this, uh, depending on what version of Enoch you have in chapter 74, uh, the, the big chapter that talks about the peculiar pattern of the moon, uh, it, t it talks about how the moon sets with the sun in the third and the fourth gates, and so uh, that witness seems to be uh, have happened on the same day as the day most people were confirming the equinox. So I, I preliminarily, from everyone I've heard from and from everything I've seen, it does seem like the majority of witnesses are pointing to the 20th to have been the equinox. Now, uh, preliminarily, uh, just really quickly talking about everyone's results, uh, uh, I was able to collect data prior and data on the theoretical day of the equinox, and I th definitely saw a curve in my line on the day prior, the 19th, and uh, things were a little cloudy on the 20th, but looking at the data uh, when the sun was shining the brightest during the day and comparing it to the day before, I could see it, it did look pretty straight, so yeah. Juan Carlos, uh, he had um, he had thought. Well, he thinks that the um, his uh, four pronged semi sphere sundial, the one Jerry Morris is, uses, was pointing towards the 19th as being the equinox. Uh, but then later he collect he was also collecting data for the straight line method, and he he. He just uh, just posted uh, a video with that data uh, to look at, and it sounds like he was uh, having trouble with that method because the the light in the evening wasn't as bright. But it did appear as though some of his points were coming off the line, and. Uh, I think we're in the longer video. Maybe we'll we'll get a chance to kind of try and look at that data up close. But it was really kind of hard to tell because he had so many marks and lines all over the place. I've I've asked him to take a real good picture of his data board, and uh, maybe if he can circle the earliest point he collected in the morning on the 
19th and the 20th and then the latest point he collected in the evening and the points he collected at solar noon and we can kind of look at those uh, points uh, the points he felt confident about and uh, we can plot some lines and see what's going on there but it, it sounded like uh, yeah, I don't know. And then, uh, in addition, Jer uh, Juan uh, also talked about the witness of the moon. And there are two interesting witnesses that I think the moon gives. And Juan was talking about one, and Jerry, or Lee, and Asherit on Jerry Morris's channel was talking about the other. But the, the first sign Juan talked about was how Enoch talks about this full moon pattern that happens every third year because the, well, in theory, I guess, because the, uh, <laughs> because the solar cycle is 364 days and the lunar cycle is 10 days shorter than that. But uh, that just made me think, I mean, I guess, I guess that's the big question. Is the solar cycle actually 364 and doesn't really seem like that? I mean, we'll just have to keep collecting data and see. I think next year will really be obvious and telling because I think Juan and Jerry, well, definitely Juan kind of jumped in and started his, collecting his data kind of ahead of the leap year cycle, so it's just kind of naturally seems reasonable because the leap year cycle has been kind of drifting back anyway. But I think next year will be really telling. I'm still open-minded either way. But, uh, yeah, that, that was interesting. The sign that... Uh, Juan was talking about was how the moon, because it's a shorter cycle than the sun, uh, it happens to reset every three years, the phases, and it resets on a full moon. And whether it's 364 or 365, the solar cycle, maybe, I don't know, maybe we're just misunderstanding something in the translation, but I mean, it seems... You know, if, if the solar cycle was truly 365.25 or something, then the moon would have to be slightly more than 10 days behind. Or uh, it, There's some things to think out there. But if it did work out, and it looks like it did work out for him, and it worked out two or three years before when it theoretically reset, then that would tell me either we're missing something in the translation, how to apply this knowledge, something's going on with the way he's talking about 364, and 354 uh, and we're just missing how to apply that or uh, I don't know if it's if it's somehow more than that it, it's 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 got to be the same percentage it, it, somehow it's got to be the same percentage off if we're again if we're missing that from the translation because it seems one was able to point out that this witness did reset itself and he has good footage of that on his website and a uh, Facebook channel light to the nations and so I, I don't know what's going on there but it does it look like this time around he was right and uh, I don't rem know if he was able to record from three two to three years ago but he said he said that was a very big sign for him then so that's one to keep an eye out for the so I think that's the end of Juan's observations jumping to Jerry and talking about the moon again the other sign that Enoch talks about that the moon gives is uh, it's setting in the same portal as the sun and Jerry has wonderful or Lee uh, and Asherit have wonderful uh, time-lapse video showing how this happened and uh, it, it appears to have happened like I said in the same day as they saw the equinox on their four-pronged semi-sphere sundial um, so that's a double confirmation for that. That's a pretty sound double confirmation for them, I think. They saw both the sun and the moon. Um, so, uh, let's see. So, yeah, uh, I recommend checking that out. Um, so that's, that was their observations. I heard, uh, I'm going to find out if people are okay with me. Uh, ooh. Oh, sorry, I'm, I just got somewhere and I'm parking my car. Um, I um, I got somewhere, uh, some different people, I need to ask their permission if they're okay with me sharing their information. Uh, but I, I saw one uh, individual in the comment section of one of the videos saying they also confirmed this witness of the moon setting in the same portal as the sun. Uh, and uh, so... 
let's see who else there is oh oh okay moving on there is a brother his uh youtube profile is squirrely nations and he has just put in a great amount of effort i mean we all have uh and you know i'm my thanks to everyone who worked so hard to put this data together and try and collect all this data but you need to go and check out some of his videos because he has just done a good job with many different methods looking to try and confirm the movements of the luminaries and he has a very solid understanding uh and uh of uh of the things enoch talks about i think and uh, he just does a great great job of putting it all together and breaking it down and, and talking about these luminary movements but uh he uh he also i believe confirmed the the moon setting in the same portal as the sun he has a really cool video showing how the sun traces a very specific trajectory down to the horizon matching the angle of uh of a block he laid on the ground great to check that out i'm not sure if that video had the sun and the moon doing that uh, but i know he had definitely some videos where he was talking about confirming that alignment too possibly he confirmed both the alignment Juan was talking about and the alignment Jerry was talking about or, or the phase thing that Juan was talking about and the alignment thing that uh, uh, Jerry was talking about but I, I encourage you to, to, to check out his channel just great stuff and um, the um, uh, moving on to his observations of the uh, measurements of the sun, it was just great. Uh, he had a bunch of ideas for how to do it himself, and uh, he ended up trying the straight line method too. And I do believe he was able to prove out a uh, question that I have had for a long time, is if these three straight line patterns that the sun makes during the course of the year, the one curve on the winter solstice straight line on the equinox and then the other curve on the other solstice i've always wondered if during the time of the equinox if you could in three to three days of back-to-back -back data if you could see the curve one way see the straight line the next day and then see a flipped curve the third day and i've always wondered if that would happen actually happen in three days or if the data it was too hard to tell and uh you would you would see you would only see the data um you would only see the data uh, you couldn't tell uh, the straight line or something but uh, i've always had that question and i think he was able to answer that question he was able to collect data for uh the the day's book ending uh the theoretical equinox uh, he wasn't able to collect data on the theoretical equinox but he was able to call the 20th but he was able to collect on the 19th and the 21st and he appears to have confirmed two different arcs flipped one way and the other on on those two days bookending the equinox and so i saw the straight line on the equinox i believe uh in in lieu of him missing that day but i mean even though he didn't get that day he did get the two days around that day with a flipped arc so that's really cool uh to see that i think that's good possibly very good confirmation of equinox event um i would like to add i still at some point in the future would like to prove the straight line method just a little more to make sure uh you know that that is consistent for everyone no matter your latitude because i'm just i just have some questions about you know, all your different models of earth flat or round there's a lot of geometry going on and i just want to make sure everyone at different latitudes can see that so one in the one in the north one in the south and one somewhere near the equator and remind me to talk about the guy in australia hopefully i don't forget about that but um but so yeah i'd like to see that three people at three latitudes at some point in the future um confirm that we might even have that now with the guy in australia i have to check where his latitude was but um uh, the other method would be to confirm the two solstice dates and then make sure that that straight line pattern happens on the day directly between those two dates. 
So, yes, Squirrel Nations, he just did a great job. Lots of videos uh, talking about different things. Great. I recommend you go check out his stuff. Okay, so uh, the next one I was aware of uh, was a gentleman out in Australia, and I think his YouTube profile I, was in some language I couldn't read, but I, I, I mean, I can't remember right now. I, but I think it was Enzo, and I'll have um, I'll have his that name for his YouTube channel in the description below this video. But he was collecting data as well, uh, just solar data, and but he came up with some interesting results. He he was coming up with, he thought, the equinox, according to uh, his measurements, it appeared the equinox was happening, I think, on the 21st. So at first it's like, oh, great, that's confusing. Like, I mean, it's, it's now we've got a two to three day spread. How can this be? One, thinking it's on the 19th and people thinking all the way to, it's on the 21st. But in uh, Enzo's case in Australia, it's really interesting because he lives very near the international dateline, and I understand the practicality of the international dateline, but uh, you have to realize that the international dateline was just made for convenience. It's it's man-made. It's it's not. I understand the practicality, but it is just man-made. It doesn't actually represent where the 24-hour clock begins. Now, day the day begins where you are. Time is where you are. I like the way Squirrel, Squirrelly Nation said that. Time is where you are, and that that's true. Um, I really like the way you said that. Um, but. The, so whenever, you know, your, your days start, uh, you know, depending on evening, if you do day starting at sunset or evening, I mean, it, it's your day start, it doesn't necessarily, you know, it doesn't start, uh, uh, it's confusing, <laughs> but I mean, it, your days either do start in the morning or they start in the evening. They don't necessarily, uh, for what I'm about to say, I know it's confused at least one person, but the, the thing is the international dateline where that 24 hour clock of the day cycle begins is not, it's not necessarily where the creator's day cycle begins. And what it appears is, you got to think about this logically, the signs that the Genesis 114 talk about in the sun, moon, and stars. People all around the world have to have the opportunity to see these signs. It's not, it doesn't make sense that only, there's only one spot on Earth that should be able to see these signs. Like, it makes sense that the whole Earth needs to be able to see them. So this guy in Australia was doing both a, a it appeared the four-prong sundial and he tried the straight line method and I think both of them seem to be confirming the 21st to be the equinox but he lives right next to the international date line and he agrees uh, I asked for his confirmation and I believe uh, Asherit was talking to him too and uh I believe she also understood this but she can correct me if I'm wrong but um he it, it, it seems that even though the international date line causes his date to be uh, 321, March 21st, if he saw the straight line pattern, uh, he, he did see the straight line pattern within 24 hours of... Uh, of, uh, you know, me seeing the straight line pattern and uh, Lee and Asherit seeing on their sundials the uh, confirmation of the equinox. So that that tells me that, you know, the, the international date line is just not right for where, where time begins. Like, everyone around the Earth has to see the sign of the equinox and the solstice. So, I mean, at some point on the Earth, that equinox day has to begin and then you're going to see the sign of the equinox for the full day all around the earth and so uh you know that clock just necessarily doesn't start at the international date line uh it, and, and from his observations it it seems very likely that um that the international date line is just man-made and he he actually did see the uh confirmation of the equinox on the 20th, um, 
So, uh, and I, I have a couple videos talking about uh, where does time begin, a short video and a long video discussing this, so I recommend checking out the short video, and then you can check out the long video if you kind of want more detail. But, so yeah, that's uh, that was very interesting, um, a very interesting confirmation from Australia. And I need to check his latitude, like I said, because he might be, he might be close to the equator, so then that would give us our, the third witness I was looking for to verify the straight line method was being seen, well, eh, I guess Swan was saying he, he saw it on a different day. Well, if Juan's data was, I don't, I don't know, we're still analyzing his data, so I mean, he definitely, I think he was saying he saw some curve, uh, well, I don't know. No, I, I couldn't say this time around that he... Unless someone else in the south. I heard there was also someone in Africa. So maybe they did the straight line method. I, but I have not heard anything. If, if you are that individual, please, and you have data, please get a hold of me. Uh, and I'll try and include your information in the long video. Uh, other than that, all, like I said, uh, I, I, don't have, I don't know if I have the permission to mention everyone's name. But I know there was another uh, gentleman, a truth seeker, good, good guy, uh, who was... Um, who was experimenting with three different types of sundials, and uh, he uh, he uh, he he was. I don't think he was too confident. This was his first time doing it, and he was trying the an equatorial sundial. Uh, and uh, the the four pronged uh, semi sphere sundial that Jerry uses, and then he was uh, he was trying the straight line method, and he wasn't too sure. I don't think about uh, those first two methods, but the straight line method he was trying that, and he said it it had potential to. Uh, uh, he thought he thought he was still seeing some curve on the 19th as well, uh, and he he says he lives in a good place for seeing the the her, the moon on the horizon and stuff. So he you know, I think he can be another good witness for confirming if the moon's set in the portals. So if he's okay with me including his name, I'll include his contact information in the description below this video. Uh, but I think that's it for now. Oh boy, that was 21 minutes long. So uh, that's not the short summary, everyone. I I was I was thinking it would be, but you know that's the quick preliminary summary. I will make another video where I uh, where I try and talk about uh, all the other data, and uh, give pictures and videos, and really kind of analyze it thoroughly. Uh, but preliminarily, like I said, it does seem the majority of witnesses are pointing towards uh, the 20th as being the equinox. Uh, but, you know, I hope, uh, that's just preliminary. Uh, stay tuned. Go to these people's channels. Look at the data for yourselves uh, and while you're waiting for if you're going to check out the longer version that I put together. Because I, I wanted to put this out because I know people are trying to make plans. To, they're planning their time off and whatnot, and they're trying to understand how to do that in light of all this data. So anyway, that's, that's it for now. Shalom, and may Yah bless as you continually seek out His truth in love with a pure heart. Oh, I forgot to mention uh, Nick Vanderlyn uh, in Jerusalem uh, was also looking through a sundial, and he was he was thinking it was um, March 20th, the spring equinox. So I uh, just wanted to make sure I mentioned that too. Sorry, I forgot. <laughs>